This is just going to be a short example of the kinds of videos that you can find at our website, uh, www.centerofmath.org. They're free. They're to help you with calculus. Um, this is to give you an idea of the quality and just um, to quickly introduce you to some calculus. Um, instantaneous rates of change in the derivative. This is a fun the fundamental topic in differential calculus. So suppose you've got a function of time that's the position of some object at time t seconds. Um, so I've called it p of t and I've named that variable z, which you, which you get out of the position function. If you've got the position as, as a function of time, what's the average velocity of the object between two times, which I've called t naught, t sub zero, and t naught plus h. So think of h as some fairly small interval of time that's gone by. So what's the average velocity of an object between two times, t naught and t naught plus h? Well, you should have looked at this before. It's the change in position over the change in time. So since p is our position function, it's the, your final position, the position at time t naught plus h, minus your initial position, so that's the change in your position, and then divided by the change in time which is t naught plus h minus t naught. So you get t naught plus h minus t naught. This is the average rate of change of the position with respect to time. It's your average velocity, the average velocity of the object between times t naught and t naught plus h. What we'd like to know is what's the instantaneous velocity. What, what is instantaneous? What's an instantaneous rate of change? What does instantaneous velocity mean? It means you take the average velocity as h gets very close to zero, so that you're measuring your change in position over your change in time over a smaller and smaller time interval. Why? Suppose you're in a car. Suppose you're in a car, and, and someone outside the car wants to know how fast you're going at time noon. Maybe they want to know exactly how fast you're going at noon. Well, they shouldn't measure your position at noon, and again at 30 minutes later, and take your change in position, divide by the change in time, because you could have changed your velocity too much in that half hour. What you need to do if you want to get a, a good estimate of the velocity is take a small time interval over which you don't believe someone could have appreciably changed the, the velocity of the car. How small would that be? Well, a tenth of a second, maybe? I, um, that sh should be small enough. But mathematically, what we can do, instead of having to know physical characteristics of cars and say, hmm, What's a small enough change in time so that we believe that the velocity couldn't have changed much over that interval? Mathematically, we can do something called taking the limit as we let this change in time approach zero. So what's the instantaneous velocity of the car? Not, at, not between two times, but exactly at time t naught. From inside the car, you look at the speedometer. And velocity includes a direction, so you also notice whether you're headed in the positive direction or negative direction. But from outside the car, what do you do? You take the change in the position of the object and divide by the change in the time. But you do this as the change in time approaches 0. So that's why I have the limit as h approaches 0 of the quantity we were looking at before, the, the change in the position. So the position at time t naught plus h minus your initial position. And you divide by, this was t naught plus h minus t naught. That just gives you h. This is the definition of the instantaneous velocity at time t naught. What does limit mean? It's a mathematical concept. It has a rigorous, kind of awful definition that students hate. It's that thing with, for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0. But I'm not going to say that in this quick intro. It's, um, but you should think that this quantity, the average velocity, you're, you're looking at what it gets arbitrarily close to as the change in time gets closer and closer to zero. If there is such a, a limit, if there is something that your average velocity gets closer and closer to as the change in time gets smaller, then we say that this limit exists. It's the instantaneous velocity. We have a lot of notation for it. So one would be v of t. That's just because it's the velocity. Um, ah, I've, I've switched something. I now have t instead of t naught. This would be the instantaneous velocity at time t naught, but then t naught could be anything. And our tendency is to say, well, this is what it is, the velocity at any time t. So we stop 
putting the subscript of zero there and just, just you know, this was psychological to make you think, ah, look at one fixed time. But now we want to say that we get a new function of time back and you do this at all times. So you might call this V of t for velocity. The notation for this instantaneous rate of change is this prime. Um, it's also written in this notation, which makes it look like a fraction. And this is read dp dt. You don't say dp over dt. It's just dp dt. This is called the derivative. This, the mathematical term for this, is the derivative of p of t. You read this p prime of t. It's the same as dp dt. The different notations are useful at different times. And it means this limit, where I've now dropped the subscripts of zero. It's the velocity of the object at time t seconds. You get a new function of time. Um, the units on this, it's the units of p, the units of p divided by the units of t. So if I started with p in feet and t in seconds, then this velocity would come out in feet per second. Um, graphically, graphically, how do you picture the derivative, this instantaneous rate of change. And what do you do for functions other than position? Well, mathematically, you do the same thing. Suppose you've got any function, y equals f of x. You define the derivative, y prime, dy dx, all these notations, f prime of x. Uh, people also write df dx. There's, <laughs> there's a large number of notations that all mean the same thing. They all mean the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. It's the change in f over the change in x. So the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. And as you take the limit as the change in the independent variable approaches 0. Um, graphically, what you're doing this is the graph of y equals f of x. And here's some x coordinate, and here's x plus h. You are taking the change in the y coordinate over the change in the x coordinate. Well, that's a slope. The slope of what? It's the slope of the line if you, if you draw the corresponding point on the graph at x, the corresponding point on the graph at x plus h, draw the line between them then this average rate of change is the slope of that line. That's called a secant line. Um, the average rate of change is that slope. But as h approaches 0, this point gets closer and closer to this point. And in the limit, what you end up with is a line that just glances off of the graph at that point. This is called the tangent line to the graph at that point. And it's how you picture. It's how you picture derivatives graphically. If you have the graph of the function and you want to know what the derivative of the function is at some x value, you go to the corresponding point on the graph and look at the slope of the tangent line. You draw a line that just glances off of the graph there and you look at its slope. Um, this is your quick introduction to instantaneous rates of change in the derivative. For a lot more on this, go to www.centerofmath.org and look at all our videos on it. And in particular, there's an hour-long video just on this topic.